Yeah, yeah, you know. Tell your music there. <laughs> but she was enjoying life, and that's what it's all about. Yeah. All about. I, I, I saw him the other day, and I, and uh, we, we threw a little love at each other. Puppets, both of them. Because we're both going through a lot right now. Yeah. We, we go way back, man. First time you were here, you were with Digital Underground. Mm -hmm. And um, same gang when you had um, all the oh, gang. Yeah. yeah. I was here for that. Came up on the show a few times. We, we had our ups and downs, but I think right now we had the best part that you and I could ever get to. Like when I saw you on the, on the street, what I wanted to tell you was what you did with Farrakhan was so great because we haven't been as supportive of you as we could have been. When I say we, I mean, you know, the rappers and the young black crowd. And when you did that, it was just like you made us shut up, you know? There we go with the young black crowd. See, he's, he's, he's trying to, they're trying to separate you, but that's, that's, We'll go back to that, guys, but let's run in on this. Dad, you want a way out, but most companies only deal with... Here are rappers who have gone broke. Wait until you hear what exactly... I told you. You hear the guy's voice? <laughs> it's a show to him. He's happy to see that y'all went broke. He's excited. 340K. Pablito's way. He got, yeah, he got a, he got a bunch of dumb shit on his pit. See, this is what I'm saying. <clears throat> they will forever do this with YouTube. They will always let these niggas get a hundred million views. That's talking about absolutely nothing. Nothing. Exactly. Birdman decided to steal back from his mansion. Number ten. Bow wow. Is it surprising to any number 10, Bow Wow? Anyone that Bow Wow is on this list? Considering he started releasing music when he was 13, you'd think he'd have a decent amount of cash saved up over the years. But as we've said, many yeah, white people was gonna talk about you. This is not a race thing. This is just listen to how he's saying it. He's saying that these black people. They get all of this money, more than white people, and they still can't hold on to it. Many times on this channel, what's important is to keep what you earn. During a child custody case- Didn't I just say that? Bow Wow was just a dumbass. Custody case where he was ordered to pay $3,000 a month in child support, Bow Wow informed the court he made just $4,000 a month and only had 1,500. He lied. He made, that nigga was making 100,000 a month. Dollars in his bank account. He also merely leased a relatively modest car. That might be because four years earlier- You see what he's driving in. Okay. Earlier, he had leased a Ferrari F430 and within months was behind- You think he was behind on it? On payments. Or did he just not want to pay that shit? However, the day after the hearing where he told the court that he's broke- They was charging him interest. He did sign on to be one of the new co-hosts of the now canceled BET show 106 in Park. Later on, he even gave a statement saying that he's a smart guy. Y'all remember when he was on 106 in Park? <laughs> now y'all remember that on December 2nd, 2019, he broke. And until you see him on a corner begging for money, he's not broke. Well, I guess that's one way of admitting lying to a judge in court. The funniest thing with Bow Wow probably still has got to be back in 2017. He posted a picture of a private jet on his Instagram with a caption that heavily implied that it was his. It was fake. It was fake. It was fake. His private jet that he chartered to New York. But the photo was actually a photo from a website and someone saw him flying in economy that same day and posted the picture to Twitter. And it See, some of y'all rappers just need to be real. Y'all could just be like, yeah, fuck that first class or that private jet. Yeah, I'm getting on a regular fucking plane. But I got $100,000 in my fucking Nike bag, though. An interesting twist. He That's how y'all need to learn how to be. He recently called money evil and claimed he would give his money away to fans. Now that you fucked it up, it's evil, right? No, it's not evil. You're evil. Fans, it doesn't take a genius to figure out why Bow Wow's career fizzled out. Number nine, Scott Storch. They wanted that Indian to be doing music. Okay, we know that Scott Storch is not a rapper, but he was a producer for many artists such as Justin Timberlake, Beyonce, and Dr. Dre. And the way he blew through... And after he worked for Justin Timberlake, Beyonce, and Dr. Dre, he was a puppet. His $70 million fortune... Did you hear what they just said? 
a rapper, but he was a producer for many artists such as Justin Timberlake, Beyonce, and Dr. Dre. And the way he blew through his $70 million fortune is incredible. In 2006, he had... It was incredible. Did y'all hear him? He had his $70 million. By 2009, he filed for bankruptcy claiming just $3,600 in assets. Storch wow. Wow. His lavish lifestyle included a garage with I 13... I, I, I couldn't. These are people that came to this earth to fail. Cars including a $600,000 Mercedes. It's no way anybody in New York would be able to waste that type of money without flipping it first. SLR McLaren, a $500,000 Mercedes Maybach, and a $1.7 million black Bugatti. You were supposed to spend that on a house. You, you're, you, you're an idiot. Bugatti Veyron. He also bought a $20 million yacht, a... $10 million mansion and a $3 million 34 karat diamond pinky ring. Apparently. Wow. And look, he like, I want to, I told y'all, that's my little thing thing right there, Paris Hill. And that's my thing thing. Me and her got to catch up real quick. We going to catch up though. I'm just not going to be going to catch up with her in Hollywood. She got to come to the East Coast to see me. For real. I like that dress that in 2006 he started making friends in hollywood and with those friends came the partying he basically withdrew from making music and focused on partying with his friends at his mansion in his well he just filled the mansion up with drugs and had them using it his estimation at one point he blew through 30 million dollars in a six month span however the good i don't know who the fuck he think he was that's exactly why he broke you could have went in i'm not even gonna give secrets out Fuck. Good news is today Scott Storch is back in the studio and he's back on his feet making music. Number back eight. Back on his feet making music. You see what type of money is going around in his music shit? And he was broke by December 2nd, 2019. DMX. In 2016, DMX filed for bankruptcy. I might as well go fast forward on this shit. For not the first, or for the second. Because this nigga sold more records than all of y'all. Second, but for the third time since 2009. He owed creditors over $2 million and filed for Chapter 13 bankruptcy as an attempt to save his New York home. This is a guy who's had five number- You see those fucking albums? Five number one albums. For one albums. So nigga, you can't listen to that again. Nine. He owed creditors over $2 million and filed for Chapter 13 bankruptcy as an attempt to save his New York home. This is a guy who's had five number one albums. So how did he get so broke? He he couldn't. I don't give a fuck what y'all say. He, he didn't go broke. He was robbed. Well, he has. He had to be. I don't care how many. Did you hear how many albums he had that was number one? This wasn't streaming. This was back when albums costed $10 a pop. 15 kids with nine different women. That's definitely a big part to why he's had financial issues, despite being probably the I hottest mean, rapper. Two of them albums could take care of all the kids, because he still would, if he would, didn't have signed no deal, he would have had royalties. Rapper in the late 90s. You get paid off royalties forever. That's why I try to tell y'all dumbasses. Just don't sign no deal because you will always get your money anyway. You can't go broke. And then there's you own your shit. You could just keep making it. All the crazy legal issues he's had for all the crazy things he's done. God don't want you rushing to get shit. He wants you to work hard for it. The craziest story has to be when he pretended that he was a federal agent and tried to carjack someone. DMX filed for bankruptcy first in 2009 and again in 2013. He was high when he did that shit. 13. In 2016, DMX filed for bankruptcy again. He claimed that he had no assets. Again? See, he's excited about it. DMX is fucking Indian too. Y'all ain't know just because he bald headed. That's at all except for his house. And he had absolutely no money in his bank account. He also claimed that he doesn't own stakes and copyrights or trademarks for any of his music. See, he don't own none of that for his music. That's the problem. Finally, in 2018, the IRS came for the $2.29 million he owed them. He ended up spending a year in jail for tax evasion. Number seven, Fat Joe. 
Did you guys know that fa Damn, that was a sad career. Every only thing that was fun was spending the money and making the music. Everything else was horrible. But y'all want to be rich and famous? Go talk to DMX before y'all do that. Fat Joe has released 10 albums? Because he was better than any rapper you see on TV right now. What's more surprising? He has 10 albums or that he's on this list? His first run with the tax man was back in- That just for sure locked me into not wanting to do. That is- crazy. In 2010, he only owed around $105,000 to the state of New Jersey and he was able to pay it back. But by 2012, things had gotten a lot worse. Despite earning over $3 million in 2007 and 2008, Fat Joe decided not to pay the more than $700,000 he owed in taxes. He had faced the possibility of two years in prison, but before he was sentenced, he had paid off some of the bill and also... So you will lose 700000 you could have made more than 700000 in a couple of months with music. Oh, did a lot of charity work. The judge took all this into account, so he only gave four months to Fat Joe. But he only served three months back in 2013. You would have thought he learned his lesson, but in 2016, he found himself owing... He's one of the greatest. ...owing taxes again. This time he owed $1.1 million. Because Big Pun is the one, the reason why y'all see him. In a 2019 interview, Joe said he finally learned from his mistakes. He basically advised young rappers to not waste millions on jewelry and private planes. Number six, exhibit. He told you, don't waste it on jewelry and private planes. Even though that's something I wanna do a lot. <clears throat> I wanna spend a lot of money on like, stuff like big jewelry stones, like rare shit like i could sell for more but that's crazy like because the, the jet thing is kind of fun in the middle of the night just saying then i want to get on a private jet and go to a different country do you guys remember exhibit from pimp my ride people will probably now remember him better for being the host of pimp my ride more than his rap career that's why you don't do tv shows when you're a rapper don't don't get on tv are you stupid you're gonna make yourself you're gonna ruin your career Exhibit. If you're gonna rap, just rap. See, doing spiritual videos and all that, that ain't got nothing to do with your career. That's for God. That's like having church on Sunday. But when you do all of this Pimp My Ride shit, that's all I, I don't remember none of his songs. Actually had one platinum they and trash. And two gold albums. Back in 2009, he owed almost a million dollars to the IRS. Why is y'all on that much? Somehow he- Pay your fucking debts. Blamed his financial problems on the fact that Pimp My Ride got canceled. Okay, let's be real here. The real problem for him was spending more money than he made. In 2007, he earned almost half a million from the show. But after the show was canceled in 2007, his income plummeted to only around $67,500 in 2008. Of course, he couldn't pull back on his lifestyle. By 2009, his 7,650 square foot mansion was facing foreclosure. He also didn't even own a car. He had a lease on- Wow. So you went through all that money and then you couldn't even own a car. On a Range Rover that cost around 20... You mind, that's why I'm trying to tell you, y'all regular motherfuckers, y'all are doing better than a lot of these people because they putting themselves in debt. Y'all y'all richer than them. $2,000 a month. By 2010, he... They just put on a big ass show for you. See that big ass fucking chain around his neck? He is, that's a slavery fucking chain. Found himself $1.4 million in debt. You Come see, on. because of that fucking chain. Everybody knew that Pimp My Ride couldn't last forever. All this sounds like the reason- It was trash. Why is Alan Iverson there? Reason why athletes go broke. Find out the oh, real- they do. Athletes go broke so bad, guys. We gon' we gon' we gon' flame them up too. Month. By 2010, he found himself $1.4 million in debt. Come on. Everybody knew that Pimp My Ride couldn't last forever. All this sounds like the reason why athletes go broke. Find out the real reasons athletes go broke by clicking here. Mm. Number five. No yeah, we're going to click there in a minute. We're we definitely going to click there. Nas. Nas has had a long and successful career, but as good of a rapper as he is, it doesn't mean he's great in finance. In 2009, his ex-wife, Kellis, filed for divorce. His terrible financial situation came to light while settling on the child support amount. 
Nas claimed he owed his manager $700,000 and the IRS millions, but he was still required to pay over $50,000. Shit, it be the other way around. Thousand dollars a month in child support. Kellis wasn't the only ex. 50k a month, really? You should have just took your kid. It's not getting paid either. The mother of Nas's first daughter took him to court in 2014 for owing back child support. But the worst was probably when he owed the IRS almost six and a half million dollars in 2011. You don't have to worry about paying nothing if you was taking care of your kid. The government started to garnish his wages because of that massive debt. And that's probably the reason why in 2012, Nas lost. Yeah, he lost this house. This is Georgia home. He failed to make the mortgage payments and the bank sold his house at auction. Yeah, they don't give a fuck if you owe one more dollar on it left and you looking for around the whole United States for one dollar. Nigga, they will sell that shit. Number four, Young Buck. Musicians, unlike most people, Y'all don't get to own nothing. Don't get regular paychecks with taxes withheld. They get their money with no taxes taken out. That can be a gift or a curse depending on who it is. And this is why entertainers in general get in trouble with the IRS. And rapper Young Buck owed the IRS hundreds of thousands of dollars in back taxes. His problem was even worse because when he got into money trouble, his rap career was basically over. In 2012, IRS agents raided his house and took basically everything of value from his house. Damn. That's what I'm saying. Like, this, this, is, this is crazy. Young Buck was with 50 Cent. Wow. That included his leather dining chairs, his watches, his tattoo kit. Never depend on another nigga. And even his refrigerator with the food in it. Truth be told, the tax issue is probably not completely Young Buck's fault. There supposedly was some miscommunication between his lawyer and business manager about who was supposed to pay the taxes. The IRS. His business manager was 50 Cent. The IRS did have a heart and loaned back Young Buck his refrigerator along with a few other things. But taxes weren't his only financial problems. 22 creditors submitted claims totaling $11.5 million. He ended up having to file for bankruptcy. Number three, Birdman. And Sad story. And now we get to Birdman. And niggas like Blueface wanna sign under him. Why would you wanna sign under this nigga? Don't he owe his own son money? Co-founder of Cash Money Records. Birdman is one of those people who has a heavy spending habit, but he has an ability to quickly make more money and bounce back. He's had various money issues over the years, and his latest legal issue involves this huge multi- See, I, I, that's what I'm saying. I, that's, I, I like Birdman. Birdman was the only time I, I didn't like Birdman is when him and Lil Wayne wasn't together. Because that shit, you know what I'm saying? When you grow up and you listen into a music group, and that their Little Wayne was the most important part to Cash Money. So when they wasn't together, that shit made me not want to listen to them that much. You get what I'm saying? Because their music was the it was a time where they took over the whole fucking music game. Because he had that shit set up right. He had all he knew which artist was to put out at what time. He was the perfect manager. Million dollar Miami mansion. Basically, he took out a $12 million loan for it, and he's having trouble making payments. He went into default back in 2017, and he was ordered to- Believe me, he ain't having trouble making payments. He just ain't gonna make no dumbass decision. He got a couple mil stacked for himself. Believe me, he got, he, if they, they want 12 mil, he got at least eight, nine of that. Believe me, he just ain't gonna give it up. Because he, if y'all got to take him to court, he he's smart enough to know I settled this shit in court. To immediately give up his place in January of 2018. But that wasn't the only property he had to give up. He also had to give up his North Miami office space, which is where his recording studio is located. As of November 2019, the foreclosure is still ongoing. All of his stuff in the house was confiscated and put into storage once the bank reclaimed the house. However, that didn't mean anything to Birdman. Out of all the things he could have taken back from the house, he was accused of stealing back four collector Gucci bikes manufactured by Gucci. Bank officials asked a judge for... Yeah, I believe that he would have went back and just grabbed some bikes. Do y'all think, do y'all think that? Do y'all think that? Y'all know what kind of cause he had? For help in getting the bikes back. Number two, Little Kim. Before Nicki Minaj and Cardi, there was Little Kim. 
She was the first female rapper. Birdman still got millions. I don't give a fuck what y'all say about this video. Rap superstar. She's been on songs with legendary rappers such as Biggie and Jay-Z. And when she rapped on Diddy's song, It's All About the Benjamins, she wasn't lying. She loved spending it. Unfortunately for her, her career has fallen off and her bank account as well. And See, y'all bitches that were strippers, y'all was, was falling off. This bitch was a real hoe. Like, she just got money straight up. In 2018, she filed for bankruptcy. Besides being over $650,000 behind on her house, she owed the IRS more than a million in back taxes. She claimed that she owed $4 million overall in 2018. She claimed that she was making about $18,000 a month, but she said that she had to budget $2,000 for her staff, another $2,000 for her wardrobe, and $10,000 for travel. Are those actually... <laughs> This, I told you, she was a hoe. She straight worried about her breath. She, you heard what she told them? Actually, necessary expenses? What do you think? Number one, Hammer. Pretty much everyone knows that Hammer went broke, but he's still one of the prime examples of rappers going broke. Hammer's album, Please Hammer, Don't Hurt Him, which came out in 1990, is still the best-selling hip-hop album of all time with over 18 million copies sold. Forbes estimated Hammer's net worth He'll never be broke. back then to be around $33 million. But just six years later, he filed for bankruptcy. And one of the I don't believe it. I, right when he filed for bankruptcy, he put 25 of that up. Most famous celebrity financial 25 M's disasters of all time. Then he filed bankruptcy. First, there was the $30 million mansion. Then there was possibly the most epic entourage ever. Hammer employed 200 people on his payroll, which cost him around $500,000 every month. Now that's stupid. Why you just can't have a few niggas at the crib with guns on them? Why? You could just give them a couple, you know what I mean? You could, yo, here go 200, here go 300, 400, 500, bro. What you need? You need some bud. Yeah, you good, you good. Yo, yeah, I'm gonna go upstairs play PS4. Why y'all can't just be like the old days and just have a regular crew around you? Why you gotta have all that? Most epic entourage ever. If you gotta pay that much money, them niggas don't give a fuck about you. Hammer employed 200 people on his Shit, payroll. I could, I could get a couple niggas to sit around me for free. Like 500K a month? Cost him around $500,000 every month. However, he told Oprah that it even got to, quote, a million dollars a month at times. When he filed for bankruptcy, he said he had several hundred creditors. 2011, he told Oprah that even if he could, he wouldn't go back and change anything. He believes in the butterfly effect. You know why? Because he put 25 million of them M's up. That's why. Acting that if things had been different, he wouldn't have his kids or the peace he has now. Watch this next video to find out about the real reasons why athletes go broke. This is the playoffs. Meet your crew.